Hi, I'm John, and today we're going to do a development log on Lineage. So we're going to cover the, the origin story of the game and kind of how it developed, and then we're going to talk about um, the house of how it developed and some prototypes um, along the way, and then kind of what my hopes are for the future. So we're going to look at um, this document here. So this last version, before I changed... Um, how I kind of documented this game was in April 2023, but it started back in 2020. That's when I made this document. And so this first version of the game was called Legacy. And so the philosophy behind this game or why, what my thinking was, was the main idea behind Legacy is to explore the dynamic of long-lasting consequences for early game decisions. The first few rounds greatly impact what you can and cannot do late in the game. And this is similar to Seven Wonders and how the early rounds set to motion what cards you can build in the end. Um, and so we spent about two weeks, me and my wife and some friends just talking about this and me just brainstorming. And so we kind of ended up with you know, a bunch of actions and ideas here. So explore, study, gather was the main idea of the different types of actions. Um, and so prestige points at one point were transferable. And so this may be done for a variety of reasons, but it's a way to encourage player interaction. Um, that did not stay, um, but it was a fun idea. I think, yeah, I think it was probably influenced by, by Scythe um, playing through that with the, the currency being the points and just what if you could trade the currency um the legacy is a worker placement game where the primary resource is it tradable expendable or exploitable experience is the resource that can be used to upgrade an action of a worker it is gained by all workers who return from the board without experience thus experience is an indirect resource requiring players to think through the consequences of their actions so you have an action that's going to give you points, going to give you reputation, but um, it also can give you a skill depending on which action it is. And that skill is going to allow you to do other actions with your other workers. Um, another big idea here was um, action spaces and them being explored and discoverable. Um, and one being very, very good with a paradise tile, but then two not... Um, being as useful, and then some other other type of action spaces. And here is where the game ended. Uh, the game development ended for two years. So if you have a board game idea you haven't thought about in years, take heart because it's not over. You can still pull it back up. And so that's what I did in 2022. I pulled it back up. Realized through my absent thinking over the years, it, the legacy name wasn't what it was. We were going to call it Lineage. Um, and so, changed the name to Lineage, and that was it. So, um, I, I believe at this point, I did have a second document I was also working on on my phone, but I don't really have an easy way to show you guys that. Um, because I ended up just combining the two of this document at some point. And here in December, we can see that I start fleshing this out more. So I flesh out this idea to where now I have, okay, what is this card? What does this game need? It's going to need art. So it's going to need art for the cards um, in all these different places. It's going to need meeples. Here's the different colors we could use. And then it's also going to need actions. And so here's all the different actions. Um, here's how the breakdown it would be, and then what are these actions? Well, these actions are going to be representing the skills. So there's three skills in the game. So imagination's blue, red's ambition, and then yellow's endurance. Well, what if you combine imagination and ambition? Well, that's going to be purple, and then you have orange and green, and then black for all three combined. And so using that system, so from March to December, I was thinking about this and was able to come up with these actions think through the bunny theme some more and um, try to think through some other things. So um, 
there's a lot of ideas here that got cut. So like one idea was using like a bar chart system with the action cards to measure time. And so some actions would take multiple seasons to complete. And so if you wanted to do it faster, you need more workers. And then other players could also go on the action to speed up for everybody. Um, and just in being too complicated and not really what the game was about. And so, um, yeah, still thinking through, you know, was charisma a skill or endurance or strength, you know, courage? Just thinking through what are even these things? Are they traits? Are they experiences? Are they skills? Um, it just wasn't clear at first. So yeah, there was, there's a lot of ideas here that just end up getting cut, um, but I needed a place just to write them down because I knew that it had been two years since I really thought about it. And if I didn't write it down, I was probably going to forget. And, um, and even some of these ideas, I'm looking back now and realizing, yeah, that's an idea that I may go back to. Um, but we really didn't start getting this up and running with playtesting till 2023. So si about six months after this um, it being written out, um, we added some more ideas and thinking through, okay, the, the action card is going to have core actions and then tiered actions. And we end up sh shying away from this somewhat, but this is still in the, the core foundation of the game still of you have s actions that need no skills, and then some actions that need one skill. And then you have some actions that can give you some prestige points. And that can range from one skill to two skills to three skills. And then one to two to three workers. And then the final version of the game of this document. Um, we did some changes here and changing just some things. And then we kind of moved away from this document, which I'm kind of regretting now. But... Um, it's just how I like to work. I usually just start new documents when I want a fresh start that's not muddled. Um, but one of the benefits of Google Doc is you can see the history of everything. And so we can see all the changes from 2020 to 2023 and how I thought about lineage. So this was one of the first play tests um, we had for lineage. And um, it was just pen and paper and just writing down just letters for symbols. And uh, this is how the game started. So we had paper, we had these little discs from Bingo that we used for the skills. And it was a lot of fun. And it really motivated me to dig deeper. Can I make better cards that are more clear, more helpful, um, and just faster iteration because I needed the actions to do something. They couldn't just be a name. They needed to do something that affected the board. And so this is where a friend recommended Nandek to me. And so Nandek is um, a prototyping, playtesting software for um, printing a deck of cards. So you can do other things besides cards um, with Nandek, but that's mainly what people use it for, and it's free. And so... Um, with most of the prototypes here until very recently, everything's been free. The budget for lineage is very, very low on a month to month basis. And so anything I do or print for it, um, means I can't do anything else for that game until the next month. And then if it's something more expensive, I have to wait multiple months to kind of save up in the budget to justify getting something for it. So Nandek was great. And so with Nandek, we made some fancier cards. So we had some color, and we have some icons now on the card, um, some flavor text on the bottom, and it was really coming to life. And we have another play test where later on with Nandek, we, we moved some things around, we tried some different graphic design choices, and it was a lot of fun um, playing with some of my kids and you know, we're starting to really see the game come to life. And this is where um, I have a different friend recommend Dextrous. Dextrous is a much more powerful version of Nandek, um, and that's editing program, but it had a lot more resources. So it's a lot easier to use from the visual editor, and you can also still use the, the CSS type 
uh, language to also just get very precise as well. And um, it's great. Highly recommend it. Um, it has paid tiers and a free tier. I just use the free tier. Like I said, the budget for Lineage is very, very low. And um, so this has been great. So if you want to check it out, you just go to this website up here. Um, but I made some cards. And this is where some people will freak out and some people will say it's okay. Um, but we decided to use AI images to help play testing. And so some people that's a, a non-starter and that's very fair. Um, and this is where I'll just share kind of my experience with it and kind of what my thoughts are after trying it out. So AI images, in my opinion, are not art. Art, you can copyright. AI images, you cannot. So if you're trying to make a board game and self-publish it, you really should not be using AI images because all those pieces of art you're claiming is art cannot be copyrighted. Um, and that's one of the main reasons you go with the board game publishers that they can copyright all the art for that game and get an artist to do all the art for that game as well. So I'm not an artist. I don't know much about AI art. Um, one of the reasons I decided to explore AI art was because of a, of a quote I read from Jeremy Stonemeyer, And he talked about how AI art he was against, but that there was a great area for a small game designer who is using temporary image placeholders for some of it as they're pitching to publishers. So with that, I kind of went for it and it took me some time, but with some simple prompts, you can get consistent images um, of a similar quality. So what I, Say I'm I'm pleased with all these images. No, but generally it's been effective. And here's my experience in play testing with this: is that um, with friends and family who really don't care about AI art um, in general, they think it's great. It helps them understand what the game's about. It helps them understand the theme and give feedback on the theme. Is it working? Is it not working? It helps the players immerse into that kind of world and aesthetic we're going for. Um, and just kind of see, is this the right direction or not? Um, if I had a bigger budget for this game, I would not have used, um, AI images, but you have to work with what you got. Um, another aspect on this decision was, um, even if I had paid for an artist to do images for this prototype, um, most likely a publisher would not keep the name or the theme and definitely not the the art pieces i commissioned and so that was another reason i i started against it um as you've probably seen so far i've made a lot of mistakes along this way of getting this game here and for some of you this is another example of that and for me i'm not so sure yet it could be a mistake um i don't know yet i don't i'm very inexperienced in this still um but from my experience it's been fine um if if you're using it for friends and family um and you know if you're using it with strangers i will i will tell them like yeah these images are temporary because they're made with ai and we're looking for an artist and that's why i'm looking for a publisher is that i want a human artist to do art for this and i don't have the budget for that and so that's why i'm looking for a publisher and if you're open and honest i think that that's what you got to that's all you can do. And if that's still a mistake, you know, we're going to move forward and learn from that. Um, here we have King's Favor cards we designed with um, Dexterous. We have our point tracker here. Uh, looks um, changed. Uh, so we, we made a loop for the prestige track and then did the middle for the reputation track. And that, that seemed to be better than what we had originally. Um, and we have these um, player boards as the first iteration. And we're still thinking through the colors. Um, 
and then we had a big change here. So with these action cards, they were always portrait. They were always portrait for a long time. And then we we're looking at changing some of the cards to be landscape. It hit me that they all should be landscape because you're, they're never in your hand. And so if they're always on the table, having them landscape, which is a better um, visual cue and it's easier to read and parse what you need for the card. So this is the first attempt at that change. And um, this is the, the most recent change. Um, and so we made the font bigger, we made the icon slightly bigger. Um, and, you know, and, and again, this game is not close to being done. Um, has a long way to go still. Um, but overall, I'm very, very happy with how the game turned out. And the reason is because um, the game is fun to play. Um, lineage usually ends in the, the over a dozen playtests we've done just by a couple points between first and second place. And sometimes third place is also really close. Um, and so I, I'm very pleased with where it's at. Um, but it still has a long way to go. So where am, what am I hoping for lineage here? So hoping to find a publisher a partner to take this game and make it the best it can be um there's some development choices that i've made that I'm, I'm still working out so the points i think are in a good spot but maybe there's something else it needs from a design perspective it feels pretty solid um and the 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 game is is fun um but maybe it could be funner. And this is where I need someone with experience to help me. Um, art. So like I said, all the art is temporary. I need a human artist to do art for this game. And if it's going to be me, then it's going to probably be another three years um, before I could be get skilled enough as an artist and make art for this game. Um, not something I'm opposed to doing, but I think... Cooperation and creativity and collaboration is what makes board games so amazing, and that's what I'm looking for. So if that's you and you're interested in collaborating and helping me, um, leave a comment below. Um, I'll, link a, I'll have an email on the screen if you want to send me an email um, about Lineage. But that's kind of why I'm making this video is that I want to inspire you to go out and make your dreams come to life using just pen and paper or learning something like Nandek or trying out Dextrous. Uh, but make your dreams come to life and then partner with people. Ask people for help. Um, and so I hope this was helpful. And sorry if some of the stuff was too controversial, but I think we live in an exciting time. And we got, we got to be willing to make mistakes. And if it's a mistake, we learn from it and move forward. And I'm excited to hear um, from back from you guys about what you guys are working on. Thanks.